flow is your team having to, the ability to be able to attack a defense in transition, in early, and or in the half court on their own. Okay? Flow, again, is your team having the ability to be able to attack a defense in transition, in early, or in the half court on their own? That's what flow is. It's continuous. You know, there are a lot of coaches that every time you get, get the ball, like, whoa, 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 two down, two down, two down. Or excuse me, two down, two down, two down. Three up, thumb up, whatever. They make a call. And that slows the game down. To me, that's not flow. In the NBA, defenses are so good, guys are so big, they're so long, the floor seems so small because of the athleticism and the length that we like to try to attack a defense before it gets set. And if that's the case, your guys have to be able to understand how to play at that type of pace or that type of flow without guidance or direction from the coach during the course of the game. You know, now, dead ball situations, timeouts, you can talk to your team about certain things, but they got to be able to play the game offensively within some sort of system so they all understand where they need to go and what they need to do. They need to be able to attack the team so they're not always going against a set defense. That's what flow to me means, okay? Your offense, your offense starts with a defensive rebound. Your offense starts with a defensive rebound. Once you get a defensive rebound, okay, now you're transitioning to offense. And there are a lot of different things that you can do once you get a defensive rebound. Let me get uh, five blacks out here with the ball. Five, five black shirts out here with the ball. Yep, you see the ball. Now, <laughs> Everybody must box out when you're defensive rebound. I don't like guys leaking out or contesting and running out, looking for easy baskets the other way. Because getting, posse getting possession of this ball is extremely important in the NBA. And if you contest and continue, and you just have four guys trying to box out, it usually does not result in anything good. So everybody has to put a body on a body when it comes to rebound. Okay? You got five guys, we'll just put two, two bigs here, three smalls hop around the corner, uh, perimeter. Ball goes up, boom. Boom. Right now we're on offense. A lot of times, when people teach their guards, they teach their guards, boom, come out here and make themselves available. We don't want to do that. We don't want to do that in the NBA. We want deep outlets. So as soon as we know that this guy is about to get the rebound, if I'm a guard and I'm standing here, I'm turning and I'm running up the floor. I'm running up the floor and it's his job, based on drills and repetition and stuff like that, it's his job to throw the ball to me on the run. And a lot of times, that pass is not going to be a chest pass. It's going to be, boom, an overhead pass, or maybe a baseball pass. All right? We went high and deep outlets. High and deep outlets. Because obviously, the ball moves quicker than the man. All right? So if you can throw that ball up the floor, you're going to give yourself an advantage. One interesting person, I, I don't know if you guys ever really watched Tim Duncan closely, but, but Tim's outlets, a lot of times he'll throw it, he'll throw a two-hand or the head pass, but he, he likes to throw bounce passes as outlets. So Tony Parker, a lot of times, Tim will get a rebound, Tony Parker's running up the floor, and he'll throw a long bounce pass, and boom, just like that to Tony. So he can, or to whoever, so he can catch on the run. 
It's the craziest thing in the world because you think that it would get stolen a lot more, but he's somehow, some way mastered it. Okay? But again, the most important thing is high outlets of the form. Now, once that high outlet happens, now you can get, tra you can get to transition. Right? But before I go into transition, I talked a little bit about this a couple of days ago. You have to have bullet points defensively and offensively for your team, in my opinion. And these bullet points are stuff that are, are things that you want to stress over and over and over again. And then from there, you know, it can sprinkle out to a lot of different points. My three bullet points, I call them staples. You got three defensive staples, three offensive staples. My three offensive staples, I said this the other day, first one is pace. Well, what is pace mean? Okay, you have the word pace. Underneath pace, to me, high and deep outlets, what I just talked about there. Getting into your offense with 21 or 20 seconds on the shot clock. You need to get to your offense by then so you can get to a third or fourth option if you need to. Yeah. Not only is there pace in the full court, but there's pace in the half court. When I make a pass, I make a basket cut. I gotta go with pace to get the defense to react. If I'm gonna go set a screen for my teammate in a pick and roll situation, I need to go with pace so I can create separation from the big. So now that when I set a screen, that guard's able to come off and be able to attack the big going downhill. So pace is very important in the full court and the half court. But pace starts with getting the ball up the floor quickly with that long and or deep outlet. Pace is the first one. The second one is space. Space, again, when I talk to my team, I want them to understand exactly what I'm talking about whenever I'm describing something. And so when it comes to space, I've, I've uh, broken the floor down into six different areas. This is quadrant one, quadrant two, quadrant three, quadrant four. Dunker one and dunker two. So now, when I talk to my team about space, the one thing I don't want my, I don't want the guys on my team to do, I don't want there to be two guys in the same quadrant. Unless a screen is happening, a pick and roll is happening, or a DHO is happening. Okay? Other than that, Guys should be constantly moving to try, try to create or to try to put one individual in each quadrant while having one guy in either dunker spot. Sometimes if you have two traditional bigs, you may have two guys, one in each dunker spot. And then you got three guys on the perimeter, you know, possibly in, in three of the four quadrants. Okay, so again, pace, space is the second most important thing, and then lastly is point five. Point five, and what do I mean by point five? Well, I want my guys to make quick, intelligent decisions, because if the ball gets swung to me on the wing, and I catch it, and I sit here and I hold it, or I sit here and I do this, it's going to give a good defensive team an opportunity to load and talk, communicate, and be set against whatever I'm trying to do. It's going to give them the advantage. So point five means that when I catch the ball, I have point five seconds to make a decision. 0.5 seconds to make a decision. Get a rebound here, he's running up the floor, outlet happens. The first area in offense that you know, we like to play out of is transition. 
Now, there's no rule or rhyme to anything in transition except we want to make sure that whenever we get that outlet, if we see an advantage, we want to attack. We want to open the floor as wide as we can, and we want to attack. We want this ball handler to try to get two feet in the paint. If he can get two feet in the paint in transition and collapse the defense for a drive and kick, great. We're taking the first open shot, whether it's a three or it's something to the rim. Those are the two things that we like to get out of transition. A catch and shoot three or something to the rim. My team has the ability to be able to do that anytime they can. I, I want to preach that. Or a throw ahead for a catch and shoot three. Or a catch and drive. Those are the things that they have a green light to do in transition. Okay? The next thing. So again, you want transition buttons. The next thing is early. Well, what is early? We're going to go this way with it. So you guys can come down, come here. We're going to turn and face this way. <clears throat> so, early offense. We have assigned lanes. My one, my two, and my three. Well, my point guard, my shooting guard, my small forward. All three of those guys are interchangeable. So, one time, Tony Parker may get the outlet, or Mo Williams might get the outlet. The next time, LeBron James may get the outlet. He may push the ball. You know, it doesn't matter. My four and my five, they're interchangeable. Okay? But as we, as, as we come down the floor, okay, trying to get to our lanes, to, to fill our lanes, or run our lanes, if this guy right here that handles the ball, this guy is known as the push man. He's known as the push man. If the push man is bringing the ball up the floor after an outlet, and he does not see a big in front of him, he does not see a big in front of him, then he can start verbalizing what he wants as he's flowing up the floor. What I mean by that is, you two guys are big, I'm going to have you hop. No, no, you're good. You're too big, too good. Just take a step back there. If they're coming out the floor this way, there's no big in front of my push man. Okay? The first big down, we call him the rim runner. I'll get to that in a second. If there are no bigs in front of the basketball, as he's bringing the ball up the floor, what I want him to do, as you guys are coming up the floor, what I want him to do is I want him to get to, right there, I want him, him to get to early, high pick and roll. An early high pick and roll. And, and, it's, and it doesn't even have to be a set screen all the time. So as the ball's coming up the floor, it's his decision, not mine. I want these guys to be, to be able to play out of flow. I want these guys to have a feel of what they need to do in a lot of different situations. So he's going to verbalize. If he just sees this one big here, he's going to start yelling. He's going to go, drag. Drag. He's going to say it one time. When he says drag, what that is telling this big right here to do is as he's bringing up the floor, it's telling him to come right into the little brush screen. Okay? These guys, as they're coming up the floor, they have to understand that he's called a drag, drag, high and early, so it's their job to space the, space the floor on the weak side. We like to do this, play, we call it random basketball. We like to do this because now team's not set. Their bigs are running back. Their guards are running back. And we feel like if, you can, if we can create early, high pick and rolls before a defense is set, that's going to give this ball handler an opportunity to turn the corner and get to the paint to make a play, whether it's finishing at the rim, or kicking the ball. Okay? Take it back a little bit. If they're coming up the floor and, and he sees and both these bigs are kind of running together, but they're behind the ball again. There's no big in front. Instead of him saying drag, he may say drag, drag. 
Drag, drag. Well, what does that signify? As he's coming up the floor, I'm up the floor, I'm up the floor, and he goes, drag, 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 drag. He's telling both bigs, both bigs to come get him. All right? With these guys running in space. It's real simple. Again, he's in control of it, the players are in control of it. You go through this almost on a daily basis in practice. When you run full court drills or half the full to full drills, and they'll get a feel of how to play out of this, how to space the floor out of this. But both your guys are running the spots on the weak side of the floor. Sometimes, I want you to hop over here. Yep. Sometimes you may have a small that's in front of the ball, okay? But with the push man coming down the floor, if there are no bigs in front of him, he can still yell, drag. Okay? If he yells drag, as he's coming down the floor, well, where does he go? He hears drag, he goes to the weak side, he spaces over there, you got a guy in the corner, and you just play pick and roll. You know? And some people say, well, what if this is a non-shooting big? I'm okay if that's a non-shooting big to, to stay space, because when he comes off of this drag, He's gonna, and if he rolls, he's shaped up. If he does throw it ahead, if he throws it ahead, go ahead and throw it ahead, most likely his guy initially would be sitting right here, right? So if he's sitting right here, now on the throw ahead, right now he takes the ball and he will DHL or go play pick and roll with this guard on the weak side. And if he does go right to that action, I'm too far down the floor to have any effect right here, so this will make this backside pick and roll a lot more effective. Okay? So it doesn't matter if the small is in front, or there's no small in front. You can still call drag, or come on back, come on back, bigs. Or they can still call drag, or you can still call drag, drag. Either one. Okay? Two more looks that I give my guys in early. Go ahead and hop back over there. Anderson Barrage out was really good at this. If Anderson, I'm going to have you slightly ahead of the ball. He's slightly ahead of the ball. Okay? We, we would, as, as he's coming down the floor, instead of him yelling drag, 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 or drag, drag, as he's coming, we'll come with him. He may yell, quick, quick, and if he yells, quick, we have this guy take his, his man or run or act like he's running to the strong side block. And as soon as he gets inside of the free throw line, we have a button hook right back here for what I call a quick pick and roll. A lot of people call it a step up. Pick and roll. This action is hard to defend in transition. It's really hard to defend in transition. And a lot of times, especially if, if you had a good ball handling guard, this is a great way for him to be able to come off and stay back to the middle of the floor. And again, these guys would just be spaced on the weak side. If he ended up rolling, if he ended up rolling when he came off of this, when he comes off, he ends up rolling. And this big that came down the floor that's spacing, these guys are spacing, and this big can be placed right behind him. Okay? The last look at him, come on back, guys. The last look at him. So again, it's just verbal, verbal stuff. It's verbal stuff coming from the push man. So he's got drag, coming forward, drag. Drag, drag. Quick. It's verbal. It doesn't necessarily, the guys on the weak side of the floor don't necessarily have to hear them. The people that need to hear them are the bigs that are running with them or that are close to them. So it's easily done. The other guys will just react to whatever action he's called. The last thing he may do, again, he feels this big is slightly in front. He's pushing the ball. This, that other big is close to him. 
Again, his action is the same as on a quick. He's going to butt hump back here. But what that will tell this big right here to do is to come set aside ball spring. So now he's got a choice. He can use either one. He can come off the quick or he can come off the pick and roll. And these guys can play off each other. He may come off this quick here. If this is my shooting big, he may pop for space. And as he, as, as he pops for space, he's going to play off the ball. He may be the one rolling to the rim. If this is my shooting big here, as he comes off, he may end up rolling, and then he may pop for space, finding the hole. But those four different actions, or verbal actions, or what I kind of encouraged by pushing in to do in early, before defense is set, as long as there's no big ahead of the ball. The next iteration of it, again, you got transition, you have early. Now there's one more step where I don't want to have to make a call. I call this, I call these early automatics. Early automatics. You got your push man here. First big down the floor, he's your rim runner. I want this big running to put his nose right underneath the rim. Okay, he's my rim runner. So he's gonna run, put his nose right underneath the rim. It's gonna open up to post up to be big, possibly for a quick catch and score. As he's running, he might catch and score over the top. If none of those are available, he may come post up, or he can, may come look for the early seal. So the first big down the floor is my rim runner. Second big down the floor, real easy. He's my trail big. He's running to the top of the, top of the key, outside the three-point line. Right? We want the floor again. We want a space. We want to play four out, one in, to start. My four and five are interchangeable. Push in. As he's bringing the ball up the floor, before he gets to half court, before he gets to half court, he has the ability to change size of the floor. But once he's about to cross half court, or a, foot or, uh, a step or two in front of half court, he's got to keep that ball on this side of the floor so we know how to balance our offense. But my push man <clears throat> will bring the ball up the floor and settle on this wing or that wing if you brought it up over there. And again, the offense can be flipped either way. My other two guys, if they're running like this, as he's coming down the floor, he can verbalize to the guy in front of him, go through, go through, go through. And what that will mean is he's pushing him through to the weak side. We have a push man. We like to get a corner fill. Call this corner fill. Corner fill, rim run big, trail big, and weak side win. All right? There are a lot of ways to get to this here. But for me, this look of four out, one in, you can do a lot of different things from this particular look here. Not only that, whether you have two traditional bids, or one shooting bid, and one traditional bid on the floor, the spacing is great. Spacing is great. It's great for an early post-up look. It's great for a dribble drive and kick. It's great to be able to play pick and roll out of it. It's great to do a lot of things out of it. Okay? So again, ideally, this is how we'd like to be. Come back to half court. I want you to come, I want you to come over here. No, no, you, you're there. Now, again, it doesn't matter how in front of the ball. Now, it doesn't matter how you come up the floor. Sometimes you may end up coming down the floor like this. All right, we're flowing like this. That's my rim run game. What will you tell him to do? Go through, go through, go through. You're telling him to go through because we want one guy as my corner field. We want one push man. We want a trail big. We want a rim runner. And we want a weak side win. You would be free throw line extended. Free throw line extended. This is the look we want in early. And again, talking about flow. Talking about flow as a coach. I don't want to have to call a play every time. Because if I'm calling a play, what am I doing? I'm 
giving the defense an advantage of knowing what's coming, because the scouting is really good in the NBA. Not only what's coming, but the defense is getting set, and they're able to communicate and decide what they need to do to try to make it difficult for us to score. So, <clears throat> back up to half court. As he's coming up the floor, my push man has different options he can do with the basketball. Based on what he does with the ball, everybody will react to that. Again, he sees he has a rim run big, so we're into the early automatics. He may throw the ball ahead. If he throws the ball ahead, I call this weak. I call this now he must go weak. The play is weak. He throws it ahead, still the same. He rim runs, trail big, weak side win. He's making a basket cut. He may throw the ball ahead and he may get it back for later. Once you get, once you, if you don't get it at the rim, now you're establishing strong side post up. Right there. Ball can go into the post at any time. He's making a basket cut. This is a scoring cut. As he looks at him, making that basket cut, he's swinging the ball to the top of the floor. He makes the basket cut. I want him to come outside the dunker. On his catch there, boom. He's setting his guy up. Ball. He's setting this guy up, he's setting this guy up, and then he's making a basket cut, right? He's making a backdoor cut. As this is happening, he's coming to the top of the floor, ball gets swung there, nope, stay there. So he makes a basket cut, he has nothing. Now he's going and setting a cross screen. Setting a cross screen right here, bringing this big, big had an opportunity to post up on his rim run, he had an opportunity to post up on the strong side block. Now he gets a cross screen. He's got an opportunity to post up again after the ball gets swung. And after you make that, that, that pass there, you're going to set a pin down to bring him to the top of the floor. All right? So there's all types of movement and or actions in different looks just within this simple set. If we throw the ball into the post, now we'll go to our overload spacing. If that doesn't happen and the ball comes back to the top of the floor here, okay, when he came off that pin down, he could have caught it, he could catch a drive, <coughs> he could catch a shoot, or he could catch a pass. If he does not do either one, and he takes the ball, takes a dribble backwards here, you guys go flat to the corner, you guys go flat to the corner, both of you bigs come to the elbow, he can hit either elbow. Hit either elbow, hit either elbow. If he goes there, now we're playing split action. We're right in split action. It's constant movement. Split there. Oh, he goes to the corner. Again, you gotta teach the guys different reads out of split action. If they're switching this and they don't come together, maybe I'm gonna act like I'm gonna set it and then I'm gonna look to slip back door. But there are different things that you can teach out of split, out of split game here. Sets the split screen, just comes to the top of the floor. If he doesn't like it, once he looks that direction, once he looks that direction, that will signify a pin down. A pin down here. Now he's coming off a pin down. He can pass and let them play two man game, or he can even come triple handoff or DHO himself behind this pin, up, pin down. A lot of things that you can do playing out of the elbow action like that. Okay? So again, that's the first one. Come on back. That's weak on the throw head. The second, the second look. So again, you got your rim run big, you let it go down the floor, you got your quarter fill, you got your weak side wing, you're coming right to the top of the floor, so you're, you're the trail big. As he comes down, if he does not throw ahead, he decides to dribble at this guy. He's going to dribble at him. You see him dribbling at you, so here's the handoff here. The dribble handoff. Off the dribble handoff. As he comes here, he's going to turn the corner and dribble at this big. This big going to set this guy up. He's here. As soon as he takes his first dribble towards me, he's cutting back door. Okay? Looking for a little uh, uh, back door pass. That's not available. <clears throat> he's going to continue. He got another, another dribble handoff. On this dribble handoff, after he goes back door, after he sees he goes back door, 
He's going to come up and he's going to twist this pick and roll. So as soon as the ball goes past me, as soon as that guy goes back door, I'm coming right off his backside. You're going to dribble a hand off and space it there. I'm coming off his, go ahead, space. I'm coming off his backside to set a screen right here. Boom, I'm going to flip this. So you come on, come, come on up and set. I'm going to flip it at the last second. No, no, no. That when you set middle screens, first thing is, anytime we set a middle screen, you're still good at the top of it. We tell our guys to come directly through the net. Again, that's the middle of the free throw line. We want to come directly through the net. And then, at the last second, if he's going to flip it, we only want him to flip it like this. His behind has to be to the corner. Whether it's to that corner or to that corner. If you set a ball screen like this, especially this deep or this low, you're giving the defense a great opportunity to send you east to west. And in our game, we want to try to limit going east to west with the basketball as much as possible. If I set a screen this way, my behind to the corner, now I'm telling the ball handler to go downhill. Okay? So I either got to set it this way, or I got to be flat. You don't want it to, to be able to give him a, a direction or a choice of coming off the ball screen. So in this instance, because we want to ask you to flip it, his behind is going to be to that corner there. So come set this here. Boom, set it there. And you're, you're flat and corner, right? He comes off, and now you have a two-hand ball. You have a two-on-one situation on the back side. Okay? The thing about this is start it again. Start it again. So from the beginning. The thing about this, depending on who your personnel is, you're coming up the floor, you're flowing into the early on leg, there's the DHO, there's the DHO, boom. Boom, back door, right? Back door. Now, hold it right here. Now, if this big, if this big cuts back door, he's cutting back door all the way through the charge line. My rule is he's got to get, if you cut back door, you got to cut back door through the charge line, now you can make a decision where you want to go. But if this, if this big right here is Danielle Marshall, is Draymond Green, now, Boris Diaw, a guy that's capable of making a three, and or is capable of making a three, uh, excuse me, capable, capable of making a play outside the three-point line, he has the freedom, not necessarily to go to the dunker. He, he doesn't always have to go to the dunker, but he has the freedom to make that cut, go to this corner here. If he goes to this corner here, where do you go? No, 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 not the screen. Where do you go? No, no, if he, cut, if he runs out here, where would you go? Just go on to the next watch. Yep. So he can come out here and stress the defense, which will bump him out here, and now it opens up the paint. He come out that way, or come on back. Or he can set it, he can go to the strong, uh, strong side corner. Either one. He doesn't necessarily have to go to the dunk. Okay? But if, if he is, a non, if he is a non-stretch four, if he's a traditional big, I prefer for him to go to the dunker in the direction of where the ball is going to be, be, be going. Because this right here, this type of action always puts the defense in a bad or tough predicament. So again, that big, he go either corner or he goes to the strong side dunker. The next action on this, the next action out of this is the ball's coming up the floor. Again, this is that you trail this time. You guys flip. You guys flip. Big up. You trail. You trail. Okay? You got your rim run big. You got your trail big. You got your corner fill. You got your push man. You got your weak side wing. As he comes up the floor, he can dribble, he can dribble right at this trail big. Okay? You see, you see Tony do this a lot. Tony Parker do this a lot. Dribbles right at the trail bend again. As soon as he takes a dribble at him, he sets his guy up and he cuts back door. Nope, where are you going? You're going, yep, you're going straight to the rim, right there. Now, and as soon as he crosses the midpoint line as he's cutting, you're coming up the floor. You're coming up the floor, well, as you're coming up, you're coming right, you want you to come right almost through the middle, through the net.
nail. Boom, you come up the floor to set screen here. And now he comes off and they play middle pick and roll. Both my wings, when you see him dribble at that big there, both you guys get flat. You're right in the middle pick and roll. So again, the first one, that action is called weak. The second action, DHO. The third action, we call this dive. Dive. So again, you have three actions so far out of our same early look <coughs> where there wasn't a single play call. Where you're able to flow and attack the defense, hopefully before it's set, and or before the coach, opposing coach, coaches have time to tell his team what's coming. <coughs> One more look out of this. Come on back. One more look again. Run up the floor. Again, it doesn't matter. Come up the floor. Same spots. He could have passed it. He could have dribbled it. He could have dribbled it at his corner field. He can dribble it at, to, uh, at his trail bay. Now it's time he swings it. Go ahead, swing it. He swings the ball. He swings the ball. When that happens, again, you had this, this, the rim run thing. He posted up. He didn't get it. Now he follows the ball. Take the ball. No. Take the ball back. <clears throat> now he's going to follow the ball. As the ball gets swung here, he goes from posting up to looking to go high low. Swing the ball there. Now he goes to the weak side block. Okay? While that is happening, he set the first screen, push me in, set the first screen, he turns and he sets the second screen. So you have a possible post-up action while you have a stagger on the weak side uh, action going, uh, going at the same time. Okay? After he sets this, go to the top of the floor, I'm going to take this spot. He can do one of two things. He can go and he can stay, excuse me, in this corner here. Or he can set it and go to the strong side corner. And a lot of times, if I'm guarding this guy block to block, slide up a little bit. If I'm guarding this guy block to block and I'm in a hard three quarter, he may set the first screen and come fill this post up. No, no, you post it up, right? And he may come fill this corner. Because now, if that ball goes there, he's got to be sealed. He's got to be sealed for an easy lane. If he can't get the ball in, then right away he'll step up, set the screen, set the screen here, make a basket cut, make a scoring cut, and then we'll continue with the pick and roll in the corner here. And he'll be down or he'll stay at the elbow. Okay? Uh, take, uh, take the ball back on the wing. Take the ball back on the wing, not in the post. Go back to the corner on there. Yep. Now, again, they set the staggers, they brought him to the top of the floor, he went block to block. He wanted to stay over there, the ball didn't go into the post, they just said stagger, he swings the ball to the top. <clears throat> Once that ball gets to the top, you get to the corner, he's in the corner, you turn to the elbow, you come up to the elbow, now it's the same thing, he can hit either elbow. He can hit the either elbow, right? He can hit an elbow. If he decides to hit that elbow, he's going to go play split action. Same thing. Boom, he goes and plays split action, play a lot of different games out of it. You know, one guy may slip back door, one guy may cut back door, they may screen and re-screen. But split action in the league is hard to guard, especially if you have different types of players set. You get nothing out of it, you end up popping, okay, you get nothing out of it, again, he looks to the weak side of the floor, and you keep playing the game of basketball. Right? Bring the ball back. So now, there's nothing that the defense can do to take you out of any of this. Right? Come down the floor, come on down the floor, point guard decides to swing the ball to the trail bit. Well, somebody may say, hey, well, on this swing here, we're going to deny this guy. Great. Let him deny this guy. He gets denied. He goes back door. You're starting to go block to block. Right? You take a quick look. 
Now, nothing's, nothing's there. You go back door and you're going to bounce back out. You're, you're just going to go back door and, and bounce back out. Because this is going to be a quick look. If he's going to go back door, I'm going to hit him high so he can go make a play. What, what's, what's your, your action is still the same, right? You're going to go pin down. Nothing's there. I'm coming now for a DHO here. He's going the opposite way with the boat. He's coming off. I'm rolling. And we're playing the game of basketball. All right, so they can take away that weak side swing, but we're still right to our action because I'm looking at them going back door, and I'm coming right back to the strong side from the DHO. So uh, you're big, so here you take the ball here, you hop over there, you two are my big, so you'll be the corner field. You're both, you're my weak side wing, you're my trail big, you're my rim run big. So just hop to, that, hop to the block right there. So as we're coming down the floor, again, you can play out early. But first of all, we want to transition bucket. We want, a, we want, a, we want a, a quick open three that's a catch and shoot, or we want to penetrate kick three, or penetrate finish to the rim and transition. That can happen at any time, okay? We have nothing in transition. We want to get something out of early. My bigs are behind the ball, and they call drag. And they call drag, drag. And they call quick, and they call help. Looking to try to put the defense at a disadvantage in a quick pick and roll situation up the floor so we can dribble drive and up the kick or dribble drive and get to the rim and finish. Right? That's not there. We may go to an early automatic. I throw the ball ahead, we're right to weak. I dribble at the corner field guy, we're right to that DHO game. I throw the ball to the trail game, we're right to swing. I dribble at the trail man for right to dive. All those, there's a lot of iterations that can happen without much being said or in or done. Now I want my guys to be able to play out of the same early look with a couple of simple calls. A couple of simple calls. First one, wedge. Can I say wedge? Wedge. Well, what does that mean? Is he's coming up the floor here. If I yell wedge, or he yells wedge, or we give a signal for, for wedge. This corner field will come up, set a screen here. You will go away to the weak side dunk area. You're going to go away to the weak side dunk area, right over there. All right? <clears throat> Stay high. Stay high. You're my weak side wing. He's going to set a screen on this guy here. Now, based on where the defender is playing, if the defender goes underneath, he may go right to a ball screen. He may go right to a ball screen. After he sets his wedge pit, you're going to go to, he's going to go to the weak side corner. Okay, you can go to the weak side corner. And then we play ball screen here. Come on back. Oh, yep, yeah, come on back. If we call wedge, and he sets his screen on me, and we're, and, I, and we're a show team, so I'm staying up, but I'm buying from here. Okay, come off of this. Well, where's he going to go now? He's going to go right to the block to post up. You know, he's going to look for that and or post up. Your job is still the same. He's going to the corner. But this is a quick look or quick action that is a call out of your early look. And again, you call it's wedge. It's one thing. Hop back in the corner, get the same look. Have my rim run. Strong side block, yep, yeah, strong side block. Another one is loop, loop. And again, all your calls, if possible, you want them to be short and quick. Or you want them to be able to translate to a hand signal. I call loop. That means is loop action. You're coming up to the middle of the floor here. You're going to loop, loop off this bed. Loop off the bed. Come on up. You're going you're gonna to go down. You're going to go down. You're going to start to walk down. You're going to start to walk down. Towards, you're walking towards the rim or towards the block. You're going to be right outside, so I'm coming down right, like right here. You're going to hit here you're, as you're coming down the floor. Nope, you're going to set your guy up. First screen, you got the first screen on him. Right there, he's going to come off of you. First screen, run the baseline. Second screen into the rim, and third screen, right there. It's loop action. Now you move your point guard a little bit. If you have a point guard that can shoot, 
coming off the screens. This is great action for him. Now the ball gets swung there. You come out this way and you play the game. Bring the ball back. Go set the screen underneath the rim. Come on back. Also out of loop, again, you want to give your guys choices. They, they should be able to go this way or that way a lot of the sets so the defense doesn't know what's coming. As he comes off this first screen here, he can take his guy off the first screen there, take him a step down, right there, turn right around. Now he can come right back this way. If he comes back this way, and if he's not open, he's coming off as the second screen. So you always have an option. This is Luke. Okay? Come on back. To the game. Another thing you can do on this, as you're coming up the floor, right? I call swing roll. Swing roll. Well, what is swing? It's when he swings the ball here. And now all swing roll is, it tells that guy to not go block the block. He'll catch it, he's gonna swing it here, and he's going right into the side ball screen. So if we need the ball reversed, if we want to play pick and roll on the back side, I go swing goal. One more look at it, that's, that's an early call. And again, there, there are a million different things that you can do out of this, where you have quick hitters out of your early look coming up the floor. All right? It's up to you based on your personnel and how creative you want to get with it. And or how simplistic you want to get, or complex you want to get with it. But simplicity in our game, in the NBA game, is best as long as there's a little bit of movement and the counter to whatever action you have going on. Take the ball back here. As we're coming up the floor, point, point. If he points at this big here, he's going to go set a wide pin down. He sets his guy up. Sets his guy up. He comes off him. And there are a lot of things that you can do with this. You can catch the shoot, you can catch the drive, you know, <clears throat> a lot of things. Catches the ball here. In, 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 this situa in this situation, when you see him coming off, we want, you would, you would, you would start to come my direction. We want you coming up the floor. We want you to start to go, go back door. So you're coming off because I'm going to give it right back to you. Boom, I'm giving it right back. Now you're set the flare on me. You're looking at this flare. Oh, it's too, oh. <laughs> it's too hot. A little, a little slower. Not as hot. <laughs> Thank you. So he's looking at this flare first. Come on, looking at this flare first. All right. Now you went this way, right? What are you gonna do? He's looking at the flare. While that flare is happening, boom. Looking at this pin down next. So now they're occupied by this first action. While the second action is about to happen, defense is spread, the floor is spread out. You got multiple guys moving, you got multiple guys coming off the pin downs. Okay? Come on back to the beginning of the point, take the ball over there. <clears throat> if, in point, they decide to top lock this guy, so he's sitting on top, not allowing that to happen, that's okay, we don't want to fight him. Set your guy up, look to go back door. Maybe you might throw the ball to, to the rim to him, right? As soon as you see that they're in the top lock, take your spot. I see that they're in the top lock on that side of the floor. I'm gonna start inching my way, I'm gonna start inching my way up here. You're gonna go to that weak side elbow, you're gonna dribble the ball to the middle floor, you're gonna turn around, you're gonna turn around, so come up here. So now you're going back door to the rim, it's a top lock counter. He's coming off the pin down here, and he's coming off a flare here. So if they try to tap knock us and or take us out, it's okay. We don't need to fight. Just go the other way. My weak side, they see that the defense is in the top line. As soon as they see, as soon as my weak side boom sees me coming here, they start to get in position to react so that I can come off this pin down here and that guard can come off the flare on that side of the floor. Any questions from that? I threw, I threw a lot of different things at you guys uh, in terminology, and I hope I didn't talk too fast, but any questions out of, out of playing out of flow? Yep. No, 
No, so we want him to pick a side, whether it's this side or that side. The one thing I don't want him to do, I don't want him to hug the sideline. I want him to bring the ball up what I call left middle, so the left side of the floor but the middle. So in case he gets trapped or whatever, he's got room to go in the direction of the basketball. I want him to bring it right middle. Because if he brings the ball between the lane lines, if he brings it here, now the floor is not going to be spaced you know, in, in the right uh, place for guys to be able to play off of what he wants to do with the basketball. So my push man is going to dictate kind of how the floor is spaced. If he, needs, if he can bring it on the right side and left side, it's all the same. Our four and a five are interchangeable, and our one, two, and three are interchangeable. Okay? Any, any other questions on that? Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. If, 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 this, if he has the ball here, take the ball here. He gets a rebound. Okay? He gets a rebound. I'm running up the floor. And they take this away. This is the only time that I will allow this guy to come back to the ball. Right? He can come back to the ball. My weak side, he should have vision too. Because if they take that away, he's got a half a second to look and see if I can get open coming back to the ball. If not, boom, it's got to go to somebody else on the floor. They're not going to take every single outlet away. Somebody will be open going up the floor. And it always doesn't have to be a point guard. That's, that's what I like about playing offense this way. My one, two, and three are interchangeable. So if he outlets it to my three, my three becomes a push man. Somebody else will be the corner field. Somebody else will be the weak side wing. Yeah. Uh -huh. Now, see so this, now this is different. This, this is not half-court offense. To, to me, half-court offense is not playing out of flow. Half-court offense slows the game. If you play out of half-court offense too much, it's not opinion, you slow the game down, which is the best of defense. You know, because now you're making calls, your pace isn't as good, and it allows the defense to pick up on it and be able to be set to attack it however, you, however they need to. So playing out of flow, which is transition and early offense, we always like to come down set like this. And, and the rules for my bids are whatever the push man dictates, they will do. So again, in, in, in early, you can see, you know, drag, 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 quick, L. Well, right there, it's, let's tell my bigs what to do. You know? If not, if he throws the ball ahead, well, because the ball went ahead, it's still my bigs where to weak. You know? If he swings it to the trail big, tell my bigs where to swing. And again, once you once you guys get that understanding, there are a lot of different things that you can come up with to play out of this in, in an early month. You know, by, by a simple call or two. They can still come up the floor this way. But a different action will happen. You know, and, and let's show you one more action, like out of week, for instance. Come on back, throw the ball ahead. You're good, you're good, you're good, you guys are good. Ball gets thrown ahead. Maybe scoring cut, the basket cut, go to the weak side dunker. Ball gets swung here, okay? Cut back door, okay? And you come up to the top of the floor, okay? Now, ball gets swung here. If this is a shooting big right here, I may call a weak, weak pick, or sometimes I used to call it a weak pack. If I call a weak pick, instead of him taking, he'll act like he's taking this cross screen, instead of him taking a cross screen, I'm going to come screen right here. He's going to come up, come off the screen. He's going to come to the top of the floor and look for to catch and shoot the ball. You know, so we used to run that for Daniel Marshall at times. And bigs aren't used to dealing with a pin down. Not only that, you run weak a couple of times. Now you, that, now you, you know, after a timeout, you use weak pop, weak pop. 
Now to do that, that big is getting ready to deal with the cross frame. Boom, there's the pin down. And they, they, the other big, as long as it's a decent shooting big, he'll come off and he'll get a nice look from there. Yes. Yeah, so it's, yeah, and so if, if the, once the play manifests itself and it's done, you know, now you play basketball, all right? And, and I just say you play basketball. Um, other people have different names for it. But again, when you play basketball, my four and five, if they're traditional bigs, they, one can be in one dunker, the other can be in the other dunker. And then the three guys that are left on the perimeter, they can be in the different quadrants. You know, or one guy can be at the top and you can have two wings. Right? <clears throat> if I have a shooting big on the floor, or if I have a playmaking big on the floor, then I'd like one, one big to work both dunkers, and the other four guys to work the four quadrants. So if I make a pass from quadrant two to quadrant one, boom, well, I make good that, or I make exchange. I don't really want to tell them specific rules in that situation, except you got to make some sort of action after you make a pass. You can't pass the stand. It's just my general rule.